I'm going to, um, I was asked to respond to the question, what is the Calgary Public Library doing to impact, transform the lives of Calgarians? And I guess my answer to that is everything. That's exactly what we are about. And if you come away with only three messages from the too many words I'm likely to use this afternoon, I'd like, these are the three things that I'd like you to know. First of all, that great libraries make great cities. The second thing is that libraries really aren't about these things that we see here on the stage. These are our tools, and we have new tools and an expanding range of tools today. Libraries are really about people. And the third message, which will come to me, has just escaped me, so I shall carry on. And uh, I'll come back to that. I'm sure I will remember it. Who knows what this is? Sorry? It's Central, it's, that's right. It's the Memorial Park Library in Central Memorial Park. This was the library that opened its doors on the 2nd of January, 1912. We're celebrating, as Jonathan said, our 100th anniversary this year. We're very proud to join other uh, partners like the Stampede, although we feel sometimes rather overwhelmed uh, by the Stampede, but nevertheless, we share an anniversary with them. Who's, that, who's in the upper left-hand corner? Anybody know who that is? If anybody does, they've really read the, the notes. <laughs> Her name is Annie Davidson. She was a widow who had 10 children, if you can imagine, and she led a group of like-minded citizens, all women, to gather signatures on a petition prior to 1912 to persuade the city council to have a library in Calgary. First time she went door to door, and this was in an era when women didn't have the right to vote. She was collecting signatures from men. She didn't gather enough. She persisted, and the second time she had enough signatures on the petition to persuade city council to do what they needed to do to open the library. And with funding from the Andrew Carnegie Foundation, they succeeded and the doors opened, as I said, in 1912. A lot of very, very interesting things went on in that library. It played host to all kinds of things under a series of, of chief librarians. But there were certain things that you didn't do in that library. You probably didn't talk out loud too terribly much. You certainly, um, you wore your Sunday best when you went to the library. You were only allowed to take out two books. You didn't eat, you didn't drink, and you behaved yourself. <laughs> or else, right? Or else we fine you, or else, you know, we charge you with something or other. Well, I'm pleased to say that we do things a little bit differently in today's library. This is a children's program called Parent Child Mother Goose. It's noisy, it's interactive, and I don't know that you can tell me who the staff member is in that picture. If we were looking at a picture of the story time that was told at Memorial Park, we'd see all the kids sitting in, serried, in, in rows of chairs. The chairs wouldn't be designed for them because they were adult chairs, their feet didn't touch the floor. And it would be very obvious to you that there would be a librarian like me standing in front of the room, waving her finger, <laughs> and trying to engage the children in early literacy activities. This is what early literacy activities looks like today. Everybody gets involved. Librarians no longer have all of the answers. We no longer expect that we do the talking and you do the listening. We are building a world, and Karen Ball was describing this to us earlier, where we share in these experiences and we're co-creators in the experience that people are going to have in libraries. There's another thing that would never have entered the door of the Memorial Park Library, and that's a dog. This is our Story Pals program. And here's a young boy who, until he started to read to a dog, didn't like to read. Chances are, if you can't read, or you can't read very well, you don't like to do it. And you sure don't like to do it in front of an adult who is telling, correcting your mistakes and telling you that you're doing things wrong. As all dog owners will tell us, dogs don't judge. Unlike cats, right? <laughs> so this boy weekly comes to the library and reads to a dog. And the dog listens. And that boy will gain confidence in reading and confidence about way more than reading. 
and leave the library with a smile on his face and exposed, we hope, forever to all of the resources that libraries have to offer. Another wonderful thing we're doing, and the picture really looks good that size. I'm emphasizing the stuff that we do for kids a lot today for a variety of reasons. One is pictures of children absolutely can't be beaten, right? I mean, they're, they're just... <laughs> But the second thing is, uh, we place a real emphasis on early literacy, not only because we think that reading is one of those foundation skills that uh, if you can't read, you, you may be more inclined to lead a life of crime. If you can't read, you may be unhealthy, you may take the wrong pills, and all of those kinds of consequences. But the other thing is, we know that if we can get a kid before he's five years old, he's ours for life. And he'll bring, he won't be shy about coming to us as a teenager, and he'll come to us as a young parent and continue the cycle of bringing children to the library. What you see here is a mum and her child moving beyond the books that are our traditional tools to some new tools for early literacy. These are scaled workstations. So early literacy workstations where the furniture is scaled for a kid, the mouse probably has a, a, a ladybug on it. And together they are discovering everything that computers can bring in a safe environment, in a controlled environment, where mom can make sure that the child is seeing what it is that she wants him to see. And they are learning to do this kind of activity together. So that maybe when that child is a teenager, he won't go into his bedroom, close the door, and get up to some dangerous things for him on the computer. Of course, we don't just teach computer skills to children. We teach them to adults, to people who are disadvantaged, to anybody in our community who feels uncomfortable with technology, and there are many people who still do. Here's something that we're really proud of, and I'll describe it briefly. This is the Saddletown Library, where we opened our newest branch in January of this year. We partnered with Citizenship Immigration Canada and with Calgary's immigrant-serving institutions to provide one-stop shopping for all of the information that newcomers to Calgary, particularly new immigrants, need to know. This makes their experience in, Canada, in Canada a happy one. It means their first impression of us is a good one. It builds citizens today and tomorrow. <laughs> is it my face you recognize on that screen? <laughs> you do now, but you also recognize one of our biggest fans, who tells everybody that he grew up in the Forest Lawn area and used the Forest Lawn Library, and as a result of that library experience, He's the success he is today. Of course, he went to Harvard in between and did a few other of those things. <laughs> but nevertheless, he's our biggest fan. And what he's holding in his hand is what I'm holding in my hand today, a book. And it's called The Book of Awesome. This is our choice for our third annual community-wide reading initiative. We believe that if all Calgarians get together and read the same book at approximately the same time, they will be engaged in an exciting community-building initiative. We don't expect people to reach consensus about what they read, but we do want to encourage the kind of conversation that TEDx is encouraging today. And that is we get together as citizens and we share our perceptions, our reaction to what we see. This is a wonderful, optimistic book. Copies are available for boring, and I encourage you to join the programming that will take place in November for One Book, One Calgary. Ah, it's a crime not to read. It is. It is absolutely a crime not to read. And I dare you to tell me that you don't have a library card. Who in this room would dare admit to that? <laughs> I don't see a hand. I can't see you anyway, so it, you're quite safe in raising your hands. That's why we need a new theater. In any case, this is an award-winning program. High needs uh, schools, policemen are our storytellers of choice. And the relationship that exists between children who may come from situations of domestic violence, as we were just hearing from Kevin before me, develop a relationship with a police officer, which means that if they are in trouble, they will feel more like calling the police, more like helping the police to uncover the problems that they may be experiencing in their own families. We get out of it that kids read and have books in their hands, and the police get out of it a relationship building experience with the community that they find invaluable. Who reads biographies? Anybody like reading biographies? Or you buy People magazine and read all about the celebrities? These are our living biographies. This is our living book program. 
you don't just need to borrow, you, don't, you can't just borrow books now from Calgary Public Library, you can borrow people. <laughs> you can put a hold on a person. <laughs> you really can. Programs exist uh, throughout the system which pair volunteers who help us out by being willing to, is to share their experiences, their social identity, their cultural identity with people who weren't, want to learn a little bit more about somebody else whose path they might never otherwise cross. We call them living books. You can see in the t-shirt, and here they are on the main floor of the Central Library engaged in deep conversations about important issues. It's a wonderful program, and we're very proud of that. What's this? I'm going to, this is digital library in the community. We don't expect everybody to come to the library anymore. We'll be very happy to go out into the community. We have community partners that make spaces available to us, and we have mobile uh, labs so that we can help those who are disadvantaged learn about technology and reach out to people who might not otherwise have access to our services, might not even be aware of the things that libraries do. We have 2,000 volunteers who help Calgary Public Library deliver our programs. These are four volunteers in our Spanish Conversation Club. Who knew that it was so popular to learn Spanish in Calgary? It is very popular, but this is only one of the things that volunteers do. They do homework help classes, they help struggling readers, they del deliver materials to the homebound. And of our 2,000 volunteers, about 40% are teens, and that helps us to keep connected with that age group when they think libraries are not particularly cool. <laughs> In partnership with Sun Life, we make passes available to arts and culture activities. You can come into any library location, borrow a pass, and get a free ticket or tickets for you and your family if you are financially disadvantaged. A brand new program just launched a couple of weeks ago we have lots of partners, as you can see at the bottom here, but this is all about deficit, uh, closing the gap for people who have real gaps in their experiences. I'm going to close very soon because I can see my time is nearly up. But I want to tell you another thing that we allow people to do in the library that we never used to do. We are loaning out blank journals, blank sketchbooks, so that you can add your thoughts. We're going to ask you, believe it or not, to write in the margins, to underline the library book that you've borrowed. We never would have done that at Memorial Park. Tomorrow, a whole new day for us. The new Central Library is the most exciting opportunity for us in 100 years since Memorial Park first opened its door. I don't know what the new Central Library is going to look like. We are going to be asking you to help us design the building, to remind us of the kinds of things that are important to you so that you can build, together we can build, the library that Calgarians deserve and need in the 21st century. Thanks very much.